Welcome back to the Triple T Ranch and Sawmill. This old grinder here and an old treadmill has been hanging around my shop way too long. I'm gonna see if I can put the two together and make this dude power up and run. So we took this $10 treadmill, took it apart, and found it had a 2.65 motor in it. That's, it's gonna be ideal to drive this grinder. So what I plan to do is try to make a flat belt pulley for that, it's approximately an inch and five eighths shaft. And I'm gonna epoxy, if everything goes well, I'm gonna epoxy this Bodart pulley onto that shaft. That's the plan. It needs to be two and a half inches wide. It looks like last night aliens broke into my shop and abducted my video of me making the flat belt pulley. Here's where I glued or epoxied the pulley onto the shaft. So we're gonna test this uh, pulley. Made this wide belt pulley out of Bodart. Believe it or not, this is Bodart, but it, it's lost all its yellow because this is probably, I don't know, I probably had it 20 years. So we got positive, we got negative. These two wires go to a overload, so we don't need to do that right now. Plug it in. Okay, here we go. Turn it on. All right, here we go. Coming up, there's 10% or 10. So I made this on the lathe, but I didn't get it exactly true on the shaft. You can kind of see it moving a little bit but for a flat belt application which is slow this is going to be all right basically what was happening is this has shifted down and so i cut a piece of wood exactly the same and put it on both sides put it inside this pillow box bearing housing Looks like it's it's pretty good right there. If I drill the holes, I'll probably make the holes a little bigger than what they need to be just to give me a little more, more adjustment. So I got it on 10% right now. Yeah, it looks pretty good.
The rock's high there. Low, high. Every place the charcoal made a mark, it's high. So I've got two different types of screws going into this can. One of them is like a lag screw. I beat the head flat. And the other one is a sheet metal screw. And the reason it was leaking so fast, I thought it was the can, but it was a screw. Right here where that little divot is to cut the threads. That was, the can was right here. So that's why it was leaking so much water. So all I had to do is screw it farther into the can. This can just fits in this holder with a rubber band around it. And that's how I get the water. This right here is a sixteenth or less difference than this face. I'm going to leave it for now instead of taking that material off. Because right here it gets pretty weak looking right there. So I guess. But that's not much. But you could hear it when I run that draw knife across it. You can kind of hear that those bumps hitting or those divots. The diameter are smaller in these areas. When I was applying water to the wheel, water was dripping down on this motor. You can see that it's open. It's not a sealed motor. So I took this can, cut it, and it will act as a shield. Take that, uh, that open end of that motor from the water that drips off the wheel. Now I'm gonna do a quick rundown on each of the features of this little grinder. 
So the ratio between the two pulleys makes this about a four to one turn down. It's a 20 inch wheel. That, that leads us to around three feet per second, believe it or not, that that is rotating. So this little meter here, ammeter, came off a cathodic protection canister that had been abandoned. I decided to use it on this uh, grinder just as a novelty really. But as you can see, let me zoom in right here. I'm fixing to load the wheel. And as you can see, the amperage is going up. Let's see if I can stall it. We're stalled right there. And there it goes again, and it's, as it ramps back up, the amperage falls back off. This wire wheel right here is just going to be used to buff the rust off the metal at a slow speed. It'll be handy. Here's a tool rest that um, I don't know if I'll actually use it. I kind of like just holding the tool up here on the wheel. And of course down here we got the easy access to the on off switch. The one thing I do wish I'd have done differently is move that motor over. But to do that, uh, I would have had to have cut or added some tubing to this end over here to scoot it to the right. But it still works. One of the things I did off camera was uh, install these little casters on the back so I could move it around in my shop. And the front just has a piece of oak to make it level. And then the can goes in here with the rubber band around it that holds the water. And it's attached here. You saw me force this little hook or pilot. Anyway, that's all the features other than this controller, which I got off of eBay. Or maybe it was Amazon. I'll put a link to that. It works real well. The reason I didn't use the boards that worked on the... Uh, treadmill was it would take up way too much room I wanted something compact and also you can already see where the water is I wanted something kind of more or less waterproof anyway hope you enjoyed the video it was a lot of fun making this putting this together and we've already used it to sharpen a machete several axes and a knife so it's working real well adios God bless.